Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Alterations by Jane Suen, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. Gigi. Gigi revved the engine of her old, trusty car. She cranked the window down halfway. Backbone straight, she adjusted her grip on the steering wheel. She focused, bent on reaching her destination, setting her sight on it like a bullseye, having practiced this a million times in her mind. Visualizing this moment, every second, in slow motion, her mind obsessed with it. She took one last look in the rearview mirror, fixing her hair and touching up her lipstick. The girl's got to look good on this special day. She had picked the spot. No negotiating or backing out now. Taking in a deep breath, she held it for a brief second, then let it out with a satisfying swoosh. If her hands were free, she would have been pummeling her chest like Tarzan, and making that high-pitched, savage cry. She smiled, picturing Tarzan swinging across the treetops, traveling with exhilarating speed on the canopy highway of the jungle. She allowed herself this final indulgence before pressing on the gas pedal and speeding down the deserted highway, heading straight toward the concrete wall of the curved underpass. She tightened her grip on the wheel one more time. At the last moment, an instant before the crash, the wall looming, Gigi's survival instinct kicked in. The tires screeched. Then, metal scratched concrete, scraping the front corner and the left side of the car, ripping off the side mirror as she turned the wheel in a desperate attempt to save herself, the car careening one way, then jerking back before coming to an abrupt stop on the grassy strip on the other side of the highway. The car fizzed as it expelled its final breaths. Chapter 2 Dr. Kite a white van pulled up beside the car, and two men jumped out, rolling a gurney. They put Gigi, still unconscious, on the stretcher. One man went back to grab her purse, scooping up the contents, which spilled in his hurry. He looked around, eyes darting everywhere, keeping a wary watch on the road for vehicles. The other, a taller man, checked her pulse before placing a call on his cell phone. We found her. He listened and nodded. Uh-huh. Through the tracking device and her microchip. We're on our way. The van sped away, leaving no trace. It raced into the city into a warehouse docking area, disappearing into the dark hollows of the building as the doors swung closed behind it. The two men wheeled Gigi into a room where a man dressed in medical scrubs was waiting. With a stereoscopic eyepiece, he could be mistaken for a dentist. Dr. Kite, she's all yours, the taller man said. He watched as the doctor carefully examined Gigi, then made a slit in her upper arm removing a microchip encased in a clear capsule. "'What have I done?' said the doctor as he stared at the chip. Chapter 3. Dr. Kite Gigi had never been suicidal before. Her death wish, propelling her toward an extremely violent end, only came after he implanted this new mind-control chip. Did it malfunction, triggering an out-of-character suicide attempt? Kite looked at Gigi, stretched out on the table. We gave you perfection. How could you not want that? No disease, no malfunctioning organs, every cell optimized and in perfect working order. And she would never have to worry as long as the microchip was inside her. She was a lucky one. Every healthy cell programmed to copy and regenerate on a timetable, every sick cell targeted to die. It was his masterpiece. He conducted hundreds of scientific experiments, working tirelessly until he had successfully developed his products. Gigi had been implanted with one of the, his three earlier prototypes. That original microchip needed an enhancement long overdue, so they called her in last week to implant a new second-generation upgraded model with mind control and a tracking device. If only this time they could control the mind. The body they could now fix, not just for cosmetic reasons, but to cure people who were ill like Gigi, destroying the defective cells and replacing them with healthy ones. Once he perfected this microchip, he would have riches beyond imagination. How many people? Millions? No, no, billions? Why, he'd even offer different grades of this microchip to make it more affordable. He could almost hear the people clamoring for it. He touched Gigi's face. She had been cleaned up, every trace of the near crash removed. He sighed. The upgraded mind-control chip he'd implanted, 
He had been so close to the ultimate success, but he wasn't there yet. What went wrong today? Had it, he, had it tried to make Gigi do something against her nature? Did she suppress or override its mind control? Was the chip ineffective or defective? With a shrug, he turned, walked across the room to retrieve Gigi's original chip from storage, then re-implanted it in her arm. The taller man wheeled Gigi down the hall and into a vast room filled with drawers. He slid her into an empty cabinet and rolled it shut. On the keypad next to it, he selected the Regenerate button. Chapter, chapter 4. Lily They let Gigi sleep, and sleep well she did that night, undisturbed in the hard cocoon of her drawer, kept warm and quiet, accompanied by the soft hum of the equipment. Nothing was left to chance that night that might stand in the way of optimal recovery for Dr. Kite's patients, especially Gigi. Tonight was a tough night, with Kite worrying about Gigi again. Her actions and movements were becoming more erratic since he implanted the new upgrade a few days ago. She wasn't as careful about making good choices getting out of control. Something was going on wrong with the new chip, so he'd secretly rescued her and healed her from the accident because he didn't want her to know. When he was in medical school, he was a bright-eyed idealist. He wanted to be the next great healer. He wasn't the most brilliant scientist in the world, but he had other talents. An astute mind that seized upon a chance discovery and the drive and persistence to succeed. Before that, he had, in had an interest in electrical engineering. After earning a bachelor's degree in that field, Kite worked as a test engineer in the wireless microchip and biomedical industries. His combined interest led him to this project. It took him 22 years to do it to make changes, refine, improve, and test this new chip technology. Now, he thought, it's close to the finish line. As he pulled out of the warehouse, Kite nodded to the guys. He could hear his mother's refined voice saying, Be nice to everyone. Driving in the quiet of the evening relaxed him. What happened to Gigi shook him up. Needing time to think, unwind, and relieve some of the attention that his body still carried from the day, he headed into the parking lot of Duggars, his favorite restaurant where he felt like and was treated like royalty. Good evening, doctor, said the hostess, flashing him a warm smile she reserved for special customers. Good to see you, Sally, said Kite. Leaning closer, he murmured, I, um, I've been busy and don't have a reservation for night. Perhaps you could get me a seat? Your usual place? Yes, please. Sally picked up a menu and led the way to his table. She thought it was empty, but as she approached, it was clear a woman was sitting there alone. Sally turned around, facing Kite. Oh, I'm sorry. Kite glanced at the woman, fighting his disappointment. That's all right. You can seat me at the other table. Sally looked relieved, but sought his assurance. You're sure that's all right? I've never seen you at another table. This is your lucky table, as you always say, she gushed, a nervous squeak in her voice. Tonight is this lady's lucky night, Kite said with a gracious wave. The woman at the table watched him. A trace of a smile flickered across her face. He gave her the briefest nod, holding her glance for a moment longer. Well, in that case, let me share my luck, the lady said. Would you like to join me? Her invitation caught him by surprise. He was still ruffled, but his well-bred exterior betrayed no such thing. He gave a slight bow and thanks before extending his hand. Dr. Kite, at your service. I'm Lily Cooper. They shook hands. Ms. or Mrs., may I ask, Kite said as he pulled back the chair to sit across from her. The former Mrs. Cooper. Perhaps you know my ex-husband, Frank Cooper? I'm afraid not. He introduced me to this place. We used to come here often. It was popular in the day. It's farther now since I've moved, but I still come here on occasion. She paused. But Frank stopped coming, she added. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, no, not at all. I've had my peace and quiet while I enjoyed my meal. This is perfect timing. I've just ordered coffee and dessert. I don't believe I've seen you here said Kite as he leaned forward and spoke with friendliness in his naturally deep voice. 
determined to have a good evening. Today's my lucky day. I appreciate your generosity in sharing your table with me. I believe in luck, Dr. Kite, cooed Lily. I need all the luck I can get. <laughs>